Here's the thing. I'm not going to be that harsh on these people. Why? Because they lived f***ing 70 years ago. Who the f*** knew better? Now you have the internet. Y'all motherfuckers got ChatGPT. You have no excuse to look for bad technology. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. I am a professor of sport and exercise science and have deemed myself the king of YouTube fitness Mac talking videos about people who can't defend themselves because I just make fun of them. Uh, I started that off poorly, but we'll keep it. Guys, today I am reviewing video footage from the 40s and 50s telling us how to eat, how to train, how to be prim and proper, and how to do things for better health. We're going to examine, we're going to put our sports scientist glasses on. Oi, my glasses. Oi. And we are going to schwitz and schweck our way through this video. Are you ready? Let's do it. He's Harold Cleghorn. This is already good. <laughs> First of all, my man swimming deep. He can't physically beat off the number of hoes he's with. He would lose to them in a fight. That's how outnumbered he is. That is peak male existence. He's sucking in, which you can tell pretty easily. He's got quads, man. And um, the girls just can't get enough. They just can't get enough. If you are massy, proper 50s, man, this exact thing guaranteed to happen to you. So stay tuned for more as to how you can get yourself a, a collection of nice, nice young girls. And the local bell simply loved to see what he does to the barbells. And now so what he did there was the original clean. You had to get the barbell up to your shoulder rack position without touching any other part of your body. It was a clean pull. No interference. Later that changed because people realized that if they push their hips under the bar in what's called the second pull, they could lift like hundreds of pounds more weight. So it became much more of an athletic event, less about gymnastics, more about athleticism and strength. And it was much better for the sport. But you see there, he didn't touch shit. That's clean as hell. And it looks like uh, about 100 kilos or something. I don't know if those are dummy weights or not. Maybe they are. But the girls, they love it. And this is exactly what will happen to you at the gymnasium. If you go even today in our futuristic world of 2024, nah, nah, and flying cars and you show up to the gym, Oh man, see, you'll get all the names. Yeah, legit. Last time I worked out, I did clean 225. Had at least three hoes dressed in white in an Italian villa staring at me. And you know what I told them? I was like, ladies, ladies, ladies. This is a private activity. It's rude what you're doing. They turn around. They know respect is earned. And now we don't think we can do better than hand over Mr. Craighorn and his barbell to our Australian commentator. Uh, I've never been handed off to a commentator before. No, there was that one time I went in the trailer. So some hand handing involved. I got the part. Swings it up again with the ease of a treasurer raising the Oh, intent. split snatch. Ah, that's a beautiful lift. So the split snatch is where you get the barbell up and then you duck under it. But instead of ducking under it in a squat, you duck under it into a lunge. And thus it's AKA lunge split squat. And that's a split snatch, beautiful, super athletic movement. Um, I used to do these for fun. Uh, granted with a lot less weight, but uh, really awesome and uh, excellent demonstration of just the kind of 1940s and 50s physicalness that you could expect from a real man, see? And also notice he has chest hair. Men today don't have chest hair. Why not, men? What's wrong with you? You know, you, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm asking that? Hmm? Is that what it is? What would the 40s and 50s peoples think of our music today? Because if you notice a lot of these clips, they have the same like, nah, say, da, 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 da. that music was kind of like uh, universal for music. I mean, if you wanted music in your video, that's what you was going to get. This is that shit right there. But it is exactly emotionally jive with anything. Maybe with like a ticker tape parade. That makes sense. But like, imagine having you know, uh, a, a tour of a super modern factory. And instead of like cool techno music and robots and shit, you just get, dun, 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 dun. I guess back then factories were kind of like working at that little, little jig pace. I like it. We got a lot of game spitting here. He's for sure just running technical game at this point. That one bitch standing up, he's like, hey, 
She's looking at my crotch for her. She's like, oh my heavens. And that one sitting down, he's like, what's up? She's like, oh. And that one sitting down on the ground, I don't know, just help her up. Like, man, nah, there's a chair here, man. You don't have to sit on the ground. Uh, hold up, girl, watch this. Army. And to think that we were like I got so much pussy, I'm killing myself. That when we were young. Oh, my oh, he's not killing himself. He's uh, doing a very awkward front double bicep. Um, guys, aren't the 40s and 50s just crazy? But you know what else is super crazy, even crazier, is that we have a member section to our YouTube where you get an uncut, raw, unfiltered, unedited Mike Speaks His Mind version of this exact video in there. Get in there and get to watching that video. British publisher, ex-sergeant instructor, Reg Park. Is Reg Park. The guy who motivated Arnold to begin his own weight training journey. Multi-time, I believe, Mr. Universe. One of the OGs. Incredible. And look at how he looks in that suit. Mortals everywhere compared to a god. And the man with the best developed body in the world. Reg Park was the f***ing shit. This is so f***ing long ago. And he's still way, way, way too jacked for the era. Unreal. 1951. There was just not a lot of guys walking around in 1951 looking like that, I'll tell you that. Since a small boy, he's trained to be champion. Now, in his magazine universe, he advises all young... Damn! Dude, that's too, dope. That is some inspirational shit. And uh, he was, of course, South African. I have never, ever heard an accent that was more mysterious and difficult to pin down when I was uneducated in the matter than the South African accent, because it sounds kind of like Australian. But then not. I love it. I can listen to South Africans talk uh, ad infinitum, and I can't get enough. An 18 and a half inch collar gives an impression of Reggie's tremendous arm muscles. Another champion in the 1951 British tradition. Amazing. Oh. And I will say, especially for the era, excellent posing. Reg Park was a true professional. What do you get when PhD sports scientists collaborate with pro bodybuilders? The most effective muscle growth training app ever made. Get yours now. What's going on there? All right. We got a lady doing overhead tricep extensions. Dope. We got a lady seemingly trying to put on her shoes or some shit. Work with a band. Fine. We got a lady massaging her calves on a dildo calf massage thing. We got another lady laying down lengthwise on the calf massager thing. Fine. We got a lady uh, uh, doing a stationary bike. Maybe the only uh, second actual activity that beneficial. And then we got one lady up there on the on the on the monkey bars, just just kind of hanging out. And it's just just like, hey, let me be in the frame. And they're like, all right, get up there. Damn, dude, that bitch can fucking hit. Man, you ought to hit like me, see? Oh, little scamp. JK, holy f He's like, man, I was going to set her straight, but I don't really know anymore, see? Dude, that's fucking baller. That bitch just zapped her way into my heart. I'm saying, girl, you could knock me out anytime. Yeah, that's hot. For those who haven't got the energy to go for 10 mile runs in the country before breakfast to keep fit, I remember this device back from when I was in the 40s. Um, yeah, this is like the first bullshit and you don't actually need this to get in shape device. This is certainly not the first one, one of the early ones. And, and there are many still. Scott, maybe we can link the video of us trying bullshit devices. We've had a video about these in the more modern era from the 90s, but yeah, this stuff has uh, been in the works for a long time. Although um, the, uh, as we call it, technically the host situation is stacked full. So my man's doing the shit. It's going to work. If, if you'd use this machine, you're going to be so breaded up and hoed out. You don't even know what's going on anymore. Las Picas, as the device is called, are used all over the continent in ballet schools, for remedial exercises, and most important, for slimming. Of course. You'll slim by, I don't know, looking like you're skiing on acid. Senor Alcova gained much of his knowledge of factors like muscle tone, spinal suppleness, breathing capacity, and body balance during his experience as advisor on physical culture to the Spanish army. I love it. That's what used to pass as expertise. Did he just touch that woman's face? Oh, yeah, he sure shit did. He just, he, he just kind of did this, like pinched her chin. Now, she's fine as shit, but, um, oh, and then he went for her tummy. 
this is this Me Too shit that, you know, the Me Too movement had a lot of excesses and went nuts, but uh, it had a good thrust of truth to it. You know, just put your f***ing hands on people. And this guy is, man, this is, this is why the shit happened. Just getting his hands all over these f***ing bitches. Uh, to the University of Madrid. Yes, you, you got to look up. Why? I don't know. A proper feminine posture. I guarantee you he was swimming in the shit, too. Touch that. That looks like it's fun to touch. He's sure getting an, an earful. Oh, did I say she was pretty? <laughs> I was waiting for that. I was waiting for it. Yeah, she can still get it. Her shoulders and back. But there is virtually no limit to the variation. Uh, a lot of face. She can still get it. Next up is seemingly the health club. Say, Paddington London Gymnasium, we pay a visit to the weaker sex. <laughs> they used to just say shit like that. For a chest exercise, she has shown the correct dumbbell press. Not terrible, not terrible. Jean Elliott, 20-year-old American housewife who came to this country two years ago, is one of the keenest of the keep fit girls. For the record, vital statistics are 37, 23, 36. Oh, and she's standing. They have a little uh, ledge for her. That's a very uh, interestingly designed hack squat. I wouldn't say they're very poorly designed. So actually she is doing a squat, a uh, hack squat, what did I say? Smith machine. It's it's kind of somewhere between a sissy squat and a real squat because she absolutely can produce force from her heels. But notice her heels are sort of halfway on. It's still gonna be a ton of force, better than just going on your toes. But um, they probably reduce that heel, get her feet to come out a little wider, get her chest a bit more upright, and she'd get a lot more of what it is she thinks she's getting out of that exercise. I also noticed that the standards for what was muscular back then for women were abysmal. Um, I guess this is mainstream. They only did mainstream stuff back then, like you weren't on TV if it wasn't mainstream. So I guess who would, who would be mainstream now? Like uh, that It Signs girl. What's her What's her first name, Scott? Kayla It Signs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This would be like Kayla It Signs equivalent, which she actually looks identical to these people currently. In other words, does not look like she lifts weights. And no offense, she looks nice, like a human, a human being. Ooh, yeah, that's my kind of face. They try to make everyone all all uh, feminine, and then she's on there getting veins blown up out of her neck, squatting. That's my girl. That's what's up. And look at that jaw. God damn it, that's a real human being. Finally, once into their stride, the girls find all aches disappear. Now you're getting the hang of it. I guess that was a statement to once you're, when you begin to lift weights, I think you get a lot of aches, which is delayed onset soreness. They didn't really understand at the time. But he also said, once the girls get the hang of it, all the aches disappear. And it's true that when you have a program that's rel relatively monotonous, you initially get some delayed onset muscle soreness. Then once you adapt, you can continue to train with minimum or no soreness. The problem with that is also it's probably at least somewhat indicative of the fact that you should be challenging yourself more. So most people will do this thing where they do kind of a block of training where they start out going instantly to their maximum volume and relative effort and everything right away. And then they just continue at that pace and they initially get super sore and then not much later. So the growth curve of that, how your muscles respond to actual growth is probably under the hood that they grow a lot at first and then they kind of keep growing a little bit towards the end. There's a better way to do this. You do less at the beginning and more at the end. So instead of just going right up and going across, you ramp up slowly and then go across. What that does is it never makes you psychotically sore to begin with, but because your body needs almost nothing to grow to start, when you get almost nothing in that first day, first week, you grow a little bit and you grow a little bit and you grow a little bit and it's consistent, awesome growth all the way through with minimum injury risk and probably better overall long-term results. So the idea that you are gonna get sore in the first few weeks of training or first few days, but never after is, true as far as it's observed, but that probably indicates that people are not training ideally. More optimal training would probably mean you get a little bit sore every time you go to the gym. And that happens all the way up until your deload week. And after deload, it happens again. That's moderate level of soreness, minimum to moderate soreness, all the time means you're always challenging the body. It doesn't have to be a thing, but if you're going to talk about soreness, there is a bit of a right and wrong way to do it. Now, I've heard it said that we women attach too much importance to our appearance. Is that true or not? Vote in the comments below. There's no substitute for the daily bath as a groundwork for glamour. 
Facts. Sleep comes next to cleanliness as a beauty base. And I mean sleep. Not just going to bed if that means sitting up writing letters or listening to music. Go to sleep, bitch. Trying to get pretty. We all want a lovely skin, shining eyes, a beautiful smile, and loads of pep. Loads of pep. Scott the Video Guy, uh, are you attracted to pep in females? Yeah, a little get up and go. I don't want some bitch laying around. Sure hope this makes the cut. <laughs> and then there's this business of eating. The business of eating. Oh, what do we got there? A little Sammy. A couple of literal ho-hos, right? And an orange soda. It turns out junk food's been with us for a very, very long time. And let's see what they thought about it back in the day. Consists of soda pop and a sandwich or a big gooey sundae. Let's remember what we were taught in home economics about a well-balanced diet. The idea of a home economics class in the 40s and 50s, I just love it. I don't know why. I love, love, love it. I'm going to go back in time and sit through every home ec class in the 50s and take diligent notes. That's all I want in this life. Let's see what we got here. Some kind of something on the left there, gooey shit. I just assume it's space prison gruel. Some sort of dessert up top. Milk. It's great. Tomato soup? Maybe? And a sandwich. Very well. Proper nutrition in the 1940s. Meat, cheese, eggs or fish, milk. Protein, check. Butter, bread, fresh fruits, especially citrus fruit. That's true. There was also a thing uh, back in the day, people didn't get enough citrus fruit, they didn't get enough uh, vitamin C, and they actually would have uh, downstream health problems from that. So remember, like... Um, the mega grocery store simply didn't exist back then or for almost no one. And so you had to be pretty intelligent about what you put in your body because it was it was about getting actual nutrients. Nowadays, nutrients are so easy to get. Almost no one's nutrient deficient in the modern world. But back in the day, like, yeah, you had to make some, some smart choices. Green and starchy vegetables in proper proportion. And of course, some sweets. And please go easy on fried foods. Great advice. Why easy on fried foods? Because they have a crap load of calories. You're going to want to eat more of them. You're going to overdo the calories. You're going to get fatter and less healthy. Scott the video guy, what is that green gelatin thing with white blobs in it at the bottom of the screen? It appears to be some sort of soup. Is there a soup spoon there? Yeah. Perhaps? Yikes. Food's just gotten better. That's why we're all fat today. Food is amazing. All right. That yeah, was fun. I'm left with a lot of nostalgia from from the good old days, see? Back when times were simpler, see? Meh. But anyway, other than as an excuse to do my terrible bi-gender 20s guy and girl voice, uh, this was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, the weight training back in the day generally sucked. People didn't know what was going on, but it got better. Probably maturing around the 1980s. But the nutrition advice for overall health has been sound for literally... 100 years. And you'll have people like Dr. Oz and other, what are they called? F***ing liars, telling you otherwise. And they're bullshitting you. Fruits, veggies, whole grains, healthy fats. Control those calories. Eat a couple sweets every now and again. Be active. Lift weights. And you'll get the glamorous 1940s body that you deserve. See? And I'll see you next time for another edition of Exercise Scientist Reacts. Meh. See you guys next time. All right, that was super awesome. See this video here? You might want to click on it if you want the fun to continue. See you next time.